So here we have the new 2023 Galaxy Book 3 360, a 2-in-1 hybrid device with Intel's new 13th Gen 1340p 12-core processor, a stunning OLED screen, and this device won't break the bank. Well, here we are with our first 13th generation Ultrabook, and having spent over a week solidly using this device, I think Samsung have hit this one out of the park. So despite this being an entry-level Galaxy Book for 2023, the build quality and features of this beautiful little turn one are absolutely fantastic. From the premium aluminium body and solid construction, to the well-designed hinge that flips 360 degrees, allowing you to use this device as a laptop, a tablet, a media consumption device in temp mode, or chuck it on a desk and draw on it with the included Samsung pen. This is a very versatile device. Now this Book 3 is available in 15.6 inches or the 13.3 inches that I've got here. I have to be honest, when I saw this closed on my desk when I first got it, I could not believe how small and slim it is. But despite that, we've still got a great selection of ports. They've actually managed to cram in a Thunderbolt 4, a USB-C, an HDMI, as well as a USB-A, a micro SD card, and a 3.5 millimeter headset jack. Today's sponsor is Ugreen with their amazing range of power supplies and charging equipment. And today we're looking at Ugreen's 65 watt Diginess Cube. This nifty charger provides three AC ports for your mains devices, as well as a 65 watt GAN3 power adapter, providing two USB-C ports and two USB-A ports to charge all of your devices. It even has a handy isolated switch at the back to turn the entire device on and off. And this sturdy, well-built adapter has two large rubber strips to keep it in place on your desk. It can charge your Apple Silicon MacBook Pro 13 at 65 watts using the Power Delivery 3 protocol in just under two hours. Or you can charge your phone, iPad, and MacBook all at the same time using the built-in front ports. And with Ugreen's thermal guard system, you know you can trust it to safely charge your expensive tech devices with its built-in thermal, over-voltage, and short-circuit protection. Check out the links in the description below for more information on this item or to buy it. Now back to the video. So open up the screen, you're treated to a beautiful 1080p OLED panel. Now 1080p may not sound like a high resolution, but on a 13.3 inch laptop, this screen looks absolutely fantastic. As well as that, it's bright with great color accuracy, as you'd expect from OLED, and it's touch enabled for both your finger and the included pen I mentioned earlier. Now above the screen, we've got a 1080p webcam, and it looks and sounds like this. Moving down to the deck, and we've got a beautiful backlit keyboard, which is an absolute joy to type on. It's got good pressure sensitivity, obviously not a great deal of travel as we'd expect from these thin and light Ultrabooks, but a good layout and just a really nice typing experience. Moving down to the trackpad, it's actually not a bad size for a very tiny 13.3 inch laptop. It feels great, it glides accurately and gestures work perfectly, which leads to a great overall user input experience between this keyboard and touchpad. So, so far so good, but unfortunately the speakers are pretty average on this machine. We've got two downward firing speakers and they sound like this. Speaker test on the Galaxy Book 3 360 at 60% volume. And now 80%. Now they get the job done and they sound fine for listening to podcasts or the odd YouTube video, but I certainly wouldn't want to be listening to music on them. So let's be honest, you're probably gonna be plugging in a headset or some external speakers anyway, but in a pinch, they'll be okay. Now moving on to the performance section of this laptop and this 13th generation 1340p CPU with its 12 cores and 16 threads performs amazing on the CPU side of things. It will cut through any CPU heavy applications and the benchmark scores are really quite impressive for a laptop of this size giving us great Geekbench 5 scores and Citibench scores that are approximately 40% faster than last year's Galaxy Book 2 Pro that we tested. But moving on to the GPU side of things, and this is unfortunately an area where we're completely let down again by Intel. On this device, we've got the same RS graphics we've had for the last two or three years now, and it scores exactly the same as my 2021 Surface Pro 8 that had the pretty much exactly the same RS graphics. Now don't get me wrong, this certainly isn't a bad GPU and it'd be fine for some like Photoshop or 3D design, and you can even get away with a bit of light gaming on this device. 
But don't expect to be editing and rendering your next 4K YouTube video or playing a few rounds of Warzone. These Intel graphics just aren't up to it. Though we do have a Thunderbolt 4 port on this laptop, so you could plug in an eGPU if you did need extra 3D horsepower. Now the included 512 SSD in my model was a reasonably fast Gen 4 PCI SSD with good read and write results, which lead to an exceptionally snappy laptop between this SSD and a fast CPU. And talking of snappy, even on battery, we're getting great snappy performance, which is a strong point of Intel CPUs, and certainly much faster on battery than the equivalent Ryzen mobile laptops when they're on battery. And whilst we're on the subject of battery life, this laptop was pretty impressive in that regard, running our YouTube streaming test at 200 nits of brightness with the speakers on, we managed 14.2 hours of battery life. Now that's pretty impressive for a light use load on a laptop like this. And not only is the battery life great on this device, but the included 65 watt PSU to power it is incredibly small and compact, so that you can easily chuck this entire package into your laptop bag and hardly notice it's there. And because it's powered by a USB-C, means you don't even need to carry that power supply in your bag. You can use a Thunderbolt dock, a power bank, or even a modern monitor with USB PD to actually power this machine and keep it going. So then, on to the conclusion. And I have to say, for the price that Sony had put out this base model Galaxy Book 3 for, this is a really impressive device. This is a great laptop for students and just general computer users that want a very versatile laptop that can be used as a tablet and someone to take notes and good media consumption device that's not gonna break your bank. I'm also impressed with all the features that Samsung have managed to jam in here for this price point as well. The incredibly premium build quality, an OLED screen, a fingerprint reader, backlit keyboard, amazing power on this CPU with this 13th generation CPU, all lead to an incredibly robust package. And they even include a pen for the cherry on top of the cake. Now there are a couple of gripes, and the first one is to do with this pen. As much as I love the fact that we have a pen for this device, Samsung didn't design anywhere we could store or keep this safely. There's no pen storage slot, or there's no magnetic attachment to keep this safe. So you're gonna need a place to keep it, otherwise you're gonna lose it. And that's a real shame. My second gripe is not Samsung's fault, it's purely down to Intel. And that's these RX graphics that we've had for the last few years now. When is Intel ever gonna improve the graphics on these onboard CPUs? Now I'm not expecting a gaming powerhouse on an onboard CPU, but when you've got the Ryzen mobile graphics that have got some serious power, or you even look at the Apple Silicon's onboard graphics that can just cut through any of your video editing needs, it's really sad that Intel cannot compete and they really need to step up to the plate. So that's my thoughts on the Galaxy Book 3. I've been really loving using this device over the last week and I think it's a great all-round package for someone looking for a light 2-in-1 Ultrabook device. As always, I'd love to know your thoughts on this device. Do you think it's worth the money? Pop it in the comments section down below and I will get back to you. And as always, thank you for watching.